but I'm not using it. Okay. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Celeste and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are continuing with the 31 days of Halloween and I'm going to be showing you how I use this fabric and turn it into this wonderful modern dress. So you can kind of think of having spooky fabric types that is meant for seasonal prints all year round if it's a not saying any other words or anything, but you know, sometimes having an actual print that is very mute tone and just can be made into a pattern that just looks like a pattern and no one would know that it's like too goth or something. I think this is a perfect way to be goth and still celebrate Halloween all in one. Haha. <laughs> So with this video, I am going to be showing you how to make this dress from scratch. The only thing that I did use was a pattern that I made a while ago. Anyways, let's just go ahead and get into it. Yeah. All right, so today's fabric is this wonderful, glorious cotton print of creepy trees, smoke, bats, flying inside a moon. Basically the grayscale and a wonderful print for Halloween. I'm going to be using this wonderful crocheted lace that I've used earlier on my channel for a few other projects. I can't get enough of it and I think it's going to look amazing. And to go on top of that crocheted lace, I'm going to be using this lace that I've gotten a long time ago in LA Fashion District. I have a pre-made bodice pattern. If you guys don't have one of these, I can offer it. Just leave a comment down below if you would love to have this bodice pattern. Of course, it will be shaped to my measurements, but you can adjust it freely so it works for you. I'm going to be pinning this bodice pattern twice to my fabric. This way I have the lining and the shell. So, you know, the outside part. And an important thing that I want to tell you guys is use a really nice thick wrapping paper for your patterns once you have them completed. Having a really nice thick pattern piece works so much better than those flimsy tissue papers. Honestly, I haven't looked back. So whenever I do have a chance and I have really nice thick gift wrapping paper, I use that and I use that as my pattern piece. I highly recommend if you have a favorite pattern piece, transfer it to gift wrapping paper. Now that my bodice is cut out, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the skirt. I have a lot of this material left and I don't think I said this earlier, but I have 2.5 yards of this material. So for all you out there that use metric, like the smart people and not imperial, it is 2.2 meters. So now what we want to do is take our tape measure, stop dancing around, Oh my god. Take your tape measure and then go ahead and measure out how long you want your skirt to be. I think I went with something around like 20, cent, uh, 20 inches. One thing that's super important is that you need to make sure that your fabric is going to be going the correct direction. I had mine going downwards first and then I made sure I had the right cut and then I marked out the length that I'm cutting. I went back and checked and it's actually 17 centimeters, like 17 inches, not centimeters, gosh. So the total length that I cut off was 43.18 centimeters and then inches wise, yes, it's 17. Don't forget we are going to be adding the lace at the bottom so it's going to extend it by 0.5. All right so go ahead and cut out your skirt twice because we want this nice and full. You see me do this a lot this is just creating a basic rectangle skirt. Usually after I have that first cut out I lay it on top of the fabric again and just mimic that same cut. This way it saves me all the time so I don't have to cut two pieces with measuring. This is so much easier. Now that I have both skirt pieces cut out, I'm going to join them together at the side, making sure that it all faces downward. I'm not gonna cut off the salvage edge because I like it the way it is. And then I also went ahead and created the bodice. I just sewed it all together with a basic stitch, making sure I have the seam allowance. If you're probably wondering why I didn't show a lot of the sewing part is because I don't wanna bore you with that. But anyways, I went ahead and I sewed down this crocheted lace. I did two layers of it. So first I sewed it right sides together and then flipped it over. Underneath, I did a zigzag stitch to hide it and I used that same lace to bind the hem, almost like a French seam. Then to cover up all that nasty goop, I use the black trim slightly above the crocheted lace so it hides all the seam work. Now I'm going to take one of my bodice pieces and pin the skirt to it. You can see that the skirt has a lot of puckering everywhere, like, you know, it's coming up and that's because it doesn't fit it properly. So what I did was I found the middle point first and pinned that to the center of my bodice. Then I started going from different points, making sure that it's been evenly spaced, finding the middle point, and then pinning that to the center point of the bodice piece. You can see me kind of doing it here on the camera. It's kind of important for me, at least, to make sure that it's very balanced. You can do this differently by gathering it all by hand and then spacing it out properly on your bodice. 
I think that's a little bit of a longer method per se, and I didn't want it to be super clean. I think it's fine this way. There are a few different ways you can gather, but this is just the way I did it. Find the middle, pinch and pin, and then there you go. So now all we have to do is bring this to the sewing machine. If you have any questions on this method, feel free to message me and I can show you a more private demonstration on like my Instagram or Twitter. Now I just take the bodice and the skirt piece and slightly pleat all of these little sections that I didn't pin down because now they're evenly spaced. I don't think the ruffles are gonna to be too bad if they're not perfect, but now I just start to sew it underneath my sewing machine. Not underneath the sewing machine, but underneath the presser foot. You know what I mean? Come on, let's use some common sense here. I took that other bodice and pinned it to the waistline where the skirt was just sewn to. This is really important because this is my lining piece and make sure everything lines up. So you can see I also pinned the top part of the bodice pieces together. And this is actually going to sandwich the skirt in between. So it should look like this really funny looking taco thing. So the skirt's hanging on the sides here. And then there is this long tubey looking thing with tons of pins. Please don't stab your eye by like doing this. But this is what it should look like. First, sew the seam at your waist and then sew the seam at the top the top hemline on the bodice. So one thing that I forgot to mention is after you get to this point, clip your curves. I'm gonna clip the top curve line of my sweetheart neckline. This is so hard for me to say, sweetheart neckline. I'm not gonna edit that. So I'm clipping it here and there so that way it folds over properly and it doesn't pucker when I wear it. A lot of these curved edges you need to cut. That includes the princess bust line, the top part of the princess neck, no. Sweetheart neckline. It still sounds so weird. Sweetheart neckline. Sweetheart neckline. I don't know. Anyways, and then we're going to sew the sides together. All right, and talking about that sweetheart neckline, sweetheart, I don't know. That sweetheart neckline, we're going to top stitch it. And please, don't worry. I didn't sew my fingers. I'm safe. Now I'm going to add the zipper. I decided to use this really cool zipper. I don't know when else I would use it. It is kind of a parka zipper, but I decided to put it in my dress. So be it. Fashion is subjective. All right, let's just go ahead and add this in. So what I kind of did was I sewed my dress together and then I stay stitched around it, making sure that I can split down the center. And that is where my zipper is going to be added. You're probably thinking, wow, that sounds like a lot of effort. No. Adding a zipper and then doing everything else on top of it is a lot of effort. Don't worry, it's gonna get added. I made sure to line up my zipper at the very top of my bodice piece and then I changed my presser foot to a zipper foot and started to sew it down. Unfortunately, this took me a long time because I wanted to make sure that my zipper was on the outside, not the inside, because this is such a cool looking zipper. One side's checkers and then the other side is stripes. I just, I love it. It's just this pop of like craziness. Isn't it perfect? It's so perfect. Leave a comment saying it's perfect. And so far, this is my dress. When I said that I finished that backside, I sewed all of it down and then I added the zipper on top. So it fits perfectly. Oh my gosh, this is so trippy. <laughs> I love how quick this dress came out, but we aren't done because my arms are gonna be cold and therefore I'm going to use the rest of the fabric to create some sleeves. This is gonna be so much fun. Yeah, woo! So if you're new to my channel, make sure you click that red button down below to subscribe and never miss out on me complaining about wasting fabric. I'm going to use the rest of this fabric that I can to turn them into sleeves. So yes, they're going to be kind of like giant square circle tubey things. So I'm going to cut off the excess at the top to make a even kind of square shape. Yeah, that's what it is. This is the part where I wish I kind of held off on before cutting it because I didn't know which way I was going to actually lay out the rest of my fabric and then cut it. But I just cut it straight ahead in half, which I shouldn't have done because now I have the fabric going the wrong way and that's, yeah, I'm not happy about that. All right, so with these leftover pieces, now I gotta figure out which way I want my sleeves to drape. And I went for this way, which is making my sleeves super big and baggy. I've actually seen a trend of baggier sleeves recently with a lot of ruffles and gathers. So I will be making my sleeves like that. So I'm gonna sew the pieces together, not together again, but I'm gonna sew them into tubes. I'm gonna do that thing that I did to the hemline of this dress. I'm actually gonna do this to the sleeves too. So you can see that I'm doing right sides together on the first lace. 
Then I flip that first lace over and I place on the second lace, sewing it down, keeping that in place. Then I go back to the right side, adding the black trim to cover all the stitches and making a beautiful hemline. So I went ahead and finished the top part really quickly. It was really simple. I did a single fold hem sew and I left some room for some elastic to go in and I made sure to serge all of it first. So it's only a single fold, like I said. The next part is that I added elastic and that one is super important. So you can see here that I did the single fold and I added elastic inside, otherwise it wouldn't be stretching the way it is now. I made sure to sew down the elastic to the sleeve, this way it doesn't have a chance for falling out and I went back and forth. Luckily this fabric looks great with black thread and that's all I used. Next I just found the points of where I needed to add my sleeves onto my dress and sewed them down. I made sure to reinforce these just because it is going to have the most wear and tear on it. Also I didn't want to say like oh no it doesn't matter. Eee. <laughs> so I did that. I made sure to add the sleeves on both sides of my dress. I wanted to get the right measurement for my elastic on my sleeves so I made sure to pull it around my arm around this middle part of the forearm, I guess, closer to the elbow, and I used this measurement. I made sure to cut it twice. I took out my measuring tape and then I marked out three inches from the bottom hemline. And this is where I'm going to put my other set of lace to house the elastic chamber. I didn't want to just sew the elastic straight on it. I figured since I was going to add trim, I might as well continue adding trim. So I took a silver marker and started marking three inches from the bottom hemline on both sleeves, creating a nice layout so I knew where to add it. And when I mean it, the black lace. This project kind of gave me the excuse to be able to use up some of the materials that I have on hand that I didn't think that I would use, but it's really nice to put these to work just like my unicorn costume. I did get to use some of the pieces that I've been hoarding and it just looks awesome. Next I sewed both sides down on this trim, making sure that the middle part was still open for the elastic. Chances are if you've already watched my videos before, you've probably seen me actually use elastic and just sew it at the end and I'm probably just going to hide it into it. So yeah, that's it. That's the dress. Let's just see how it looks. Just letting you guys know, you can see my bra straps, but that doesn't add
nice, like a glove. I'm very proud at how well this all came together for being such a quick build. If you have any other ideas what you can do with seasonal fabrics, leave them in a comment down below. And I mean, literally like use Christmas fabric another time of the year. Obviously, I'm going to be wearing this dress more than once and I really love it. So I can't wait to be wearing this on the streets and it's like springtime. Yay! <laughs> Make sure to check out some of my other 31 Days of Halloween videos or, you know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay spooky and I will see you in a future video. Bye!